Welcome to the Bridge Church Midweek Podcast. We exist to connect people with others and God. We hope this week's episode helps you do just that. Enjoy. This phrase kept going into my head, and it was, just say yes. Just say yes. My prayer back was like, to what? Today on the Midweek Podcast, we hear from Bridge Church member Kendall Sir about the power of our yes when we give our full obedience to what God is calling us to. Enjoy. Hey everybody, welcome again to the Bridge Church Midweek Podcast. This is Pastor Tyler Wolf here. I am the Oconomowoc Campus Pastor, and I'm here with Kendall Sir. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Okay, so this is your second time on the show. It is, yes. Because you guys, you and your husband Jason, who's awesome, yep. uh, have led a kind of a seasonal interest group, actually one of our freedom groups, uh, bridge groups, called Financial Peace University. So we had you guys on the show to highlight that group. And now we want you back on the podcast to share a testimony. But before we get there, would you just remind us again who you are, what's what's your family's deal, where do you guys serve, how long you've been at Bridge Church? Just a quick overview. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we, my husband Jason and I, along with our two daughters, Addison and Amelia, uh, we've been attending Bridge since June of 2018. Um, and yeah, it's been an amazing journey journey and I'll go into my testimony but um we uh we serve I I help out uh, as a barista and shameless plug we do do financial peace as a freedom group um and we're aiming to start that again after the new year so we find it's a good time after the holidays to help people get focused on their new year so we're finalizing dates and we'll be announcing that as the fall goes on here so definitely to it I love it and it's such a practical way to honor God Absolutely. To not be just drowning in debt. And of course, people get there. And the fact that people get there is why this group exists. Um, and, and so I just appreciate what you guys do to meet that practical need for the body of Christ. And we want to actually do that today. Um, when we when God gives us a story, I believe we have a responsibility to share it. Mm-hmm. We don't have a responsibility to make someone else listen to it. We just have the responsibility to tell it. And we recently got word from you about something that God's been doing in your life over the course of, you know, it's kind of a long story. And so we want to share it here. Um, So would you just start wherever you want to start and tell me what God has been up to uh, in your life? Yeah, it's and it it is it's it feels like a long story to me. But when I kind of, you know, look back through it, preparing for this, just to kind of remind myself of the pieces, it's it's really amazing to me of how it all ties together. So me as a human, I am definitely type A, control freak, you know, manage my life under my terms. Um, and prior to finding Bridge, I, um, you know, we we were part of a church. We, we consider ourselves like pro-Jesus. Yep, we'd be friends with them. We, we consider ourselves followers, but not really, we didn't have a relationship. Um, and I knew there was something missing in, in my life, but also as we were growing our children and, you know, growing our, our marriage, it was, there was, there was something missing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I felt drawn to tr- try out another church, just kind of see what else is out there. Um, and that's when I, uh, knew a friend, she went here. I, you know, came along for the ride one morning and just said, Hey, you know, me and the girls don't have anything going. Can I join you? Um, and what I think was really interesting is what, what pushed me against going, um, and what made that kind of kind of delayed me in my start was just the fear of what would people think if I wasn't going to the church that I was going to previously? What would people think if I went somewhere else? Because so much of our identity felt like it was tied into where we were, mm-hmm. even though we weren't feeling like we had this connection. Um, so... <laughs> That day, funny enough, and I, I sat down, and I don't recommend this to people, but I, I sat down in the front row in Waukesha, and I, in my mind, I said, all right, God, you got me here. I dare you. 
if this has anything to do with me, if this speaks to me, then you got me. Like, then I know where I am, where I need to be. Yeah. Um, and that message was about obedience, obedience over acceptance. Hmm. And how do you um, listen to God, go with what God you know, is asking you to do, and just the amazing gifts that are on the other side of that door. And you kind of have to push aside whether people are going to accept that decision or not. Wow. And like I said, spoke straight to me, straight through me. Um, so I went home and I said, hey, Jason, this, my life changed. In that moment, my life changed. And I said, this is, this is where I'm going to keep going. And I hope that you would join me and we can grow on this together. So that's how we, how we got to bridge. And I think that's an important piece of the story um, just because you know, obedience and listening is how I got here. Yeah. Um, and then I have, I've served, um, my first three years I served as a barista when the pandemic hit, you know, I, um, we obviously the cafe was closed for a while. And, and when I, when it came time to come back, I knew that I wasn't, um, it did like it just wasn't where I was feeling called back to. Um, I love making coffee. Yeah. I definitely uh, the last couple weekends I've been making coffee uh, uh, as a barista, so I've been um, doing that again. I kind of just say like, oh, I'm making a cameo, um, and I'll continue to do that. But I knew there was something else. Um, but I felt like I was getting just no answers. Like I was praying, and I'm like, what? What do you want me? Where do you want me? If it's not there, where is it? And I was getting no answers. Um, and uh, and then out of nowhere, kind of earlier in this year, like around May, um, I started just hearing <laughs> this this phrase in my prayers. Um, you know, when I, when I speak to God, I hear short sentences. So like when, when bad things have happened, you know, in my life and I kind of cry out, the answer usually comes in something like, um, it has to be this way. Like, I'll just hear it has to be this way. And every time I hear I'm like, oh, yeah, you're totally right. It does. It does. There is a reason. Um, so I hear just real, real short phrases is, is the answer. Usually the, the answers I hear when I get answers to my prayers. Um, and I had these, this phrase kept going into my head and it was just say yes, hmm. just say yes. And it was Michelle, um, Todd, Todd's wife. It was just say yes to Michelle. Tell Michelle Yes. And, and so you had like no real context for that. No at this context, point? and in fact, my prayer <laughs> back was like, "To what? Yeah. What am I saying yes to?" Yeah, we actually have that as our mantra around the office. Just say yes to Michelle. Is no? it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it seems like a good way to go. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Sorry, continue. <laughs> but uh, but but I said I, I was like, "What am I saying yes to?" And the answer was, "You don't get to know." Wow. And and again, it was it. I knew it was my answer because as soon as I heard that. It was, oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Because I always volunteer. Or I, do, I do things on my terms, how I choose. And I knew I wouldn't choose anything big enough or, you know, like there's there's something bigger that I can't yeah. even think of. Um, so I went to Michelle. I said, this is going to sound totally out there, I'm sure, maybe. But like, I'm supposed to say yes to you. And I don't know what that means. And I don't know that it's it's maybe not right now. It's maybe something in the future. But just know I've already said yes. So when you, you maybe you'll know at some point. I'm hearing that you're going to know at some point. So wow. so she said, OK. Yeah. <laughs> OK. So at so, that point, you brought it to her at that point. She didn't really have context no, for what the Lord had spoken no. to No. Wow. And she told me, we talked like shortly after, and she said, well, I, I, I put a post-it on my desk that says, Kendall, sir, says yes. And so she'd remember and have that front of mind. Yeah. Um, and and she's like, I don't know now, but I guess we'll just we'll just keep praying. And maybe, you know, at some point we'll we'll get an answer. And uh, so on, on goes the summer. Um, it gets to be almost June. And Chrissy Fish, Fisher is the lead of our bridge church. And we had had a bridge group or bridge group. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was telling me that she was going to do a 21 days of, um, of denial starting in June. And I was like, oh, that sounds like something I should do. Does not sound fun to do 21 days of denial yeah. and, and do a fast in the beginning of summer when that's things are starting to get fun. Right. But I felt really pressured that it was something that I needed to do. Mm -hmm. So I did. And uh, it just so happened then I did my 21 days 
the day after my 21 days was was done was a Sunday, and um, I walked into the cafe and and Jean um, walked up to me and she said, "Hey, Kendall, I got something to talk to you about. Let me know when you have a few minutes." And I was like, "Well, well right now, right now is good." Yeah. Um, and she said, "Well, you know, we're looking for someone to." Um, Co- co-coordinate pack the back this year and then in the future fully coordinate um and i was talking to michelle and we just thought you know you're great with your girls you're good you're great with kids you're a great organizer you know there's so many things that told us this would be a good fit yeah. what do you think and i said yes she yeah. goes wait a minute she's like don't you have to talk to jason don't yeah. you have to you know kind of check on life and it said, is a big responsibility it's a big responsibility i said no i already said yes like in may because yeah. I told Michelle yes, and as soon as she said it out loud, I knew this was it. Yeah, this was absolutely it, yeah. and I would have never like this would have never occurred to me to you know that this is like I would have never reached out to her and said, "Hey, could I help with this?" Yeah. You know, in that kind of um, format. I just it, it it's so God. Yeah, wow, that's amazing. So for those that may not know or have heard of Pack the Back and aren't totally sure, it's our annual school supply giveaway for both of our campuses. Yep. Uh, we live in an area um, in Waukesha where there are a lot of kids in need. And so, I mean, it was... I I, I, I shouldn't throw out the number, but I mean, it was mo- probably 10 or more years ago mm. that we started this deal out of just a recognition and a burden for the kids in our community that it's it's not... It's not like people think. Some people really have a hard time getting school supplies, and we wanted to make an investment in the future. And so that's what Pack the Back is. We do it in Oconomowoc. We do it in Waukesha. And it's a big deal because it's not just, hey, here's some colored pencils. It's a whole festival, right? Yep. So tell me about the planning process. As So you knew this was it. You, had, you already said yes in May. Now you knew what you were saying yes to, so you said yes. As you started to learn how to coordinate Pack the Back, Tell me about that, how the Lord spoke to you through that and what that experience was like um, getting into that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, of course, I, I drove home and I said I uh, had to call Jason. I said, so I just said yes to this. And yeah. of course, he's like, man, that's so cool. That's, yeah. He's so excited. Um, and, you know, he has a role in this, too, because not only does he have to support me, but, you know, also I'm you know, when you're married to the person who's co-coordinating things, you get signed up for stuff. So, um, it's going to, it's definitely a family, um, you know, a a family ownership. And, and what's neat is, well, I, this, this year was actually the first year I had ever attended a pack the back. I've always been out of town. Mm -hmm. Um, but my husband and my girls have always attended. In fact, my girls would volunteer and run games. And, um, you know, we had a pretty cool story, um, two years ago, um, the the game that so they had played some games they had collected some candy the game that they were running had run out of candy and they took their own buckets and they put their candy back into the buckets so that they could give it out to the kids playing the games wow. so like it it means a lot to them too yeah. so when they heard it they were like yeah the mommy this is yeah. this is good stuff yeah um so working through planning uh, you know it was a lot of learning because there's a lot of moving parts and like you said it's 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 a festival it's about how do we get the word out um how do we get people excited about it you know obviously we we do a lot of things within the church but how do we reach outwards and how do we you know get flyers out to the areas of town that need to know about this um you know how do we make sure that people here at church as they're, you know, ministering in their daily lives, that they're talking about it and sharing. So that's, you know, that's a key piece. Um, we also, we really focus on making sure that the park itself, because it's held at Roberta Park, um, just a couple blocks away from the Waukesha campus, um, is eye-catching so that mm-hmm. as people are driving by and going about their 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 day, you know, we put big signs on the, on the park, you know, the week before or so. But then we really focus on getting really big games and right. exciting things so that, you know, as people walking by, oh, you know, let's go check this out. Um, so it, this year it was a lot about understanding what are all the pieces and, you know, how do we bring it all together in a, in a timely fashion. But then it was neat then being there the day of and just interacting with people and, and seeing how it's, you know, I, I think what really touched me was um, the th- Thursday before 
we went and handed out my my family and I and then a few other people went out and um, actually canvassed and handed out flyers. Yeah. And that made I'll be honest, that made me a little nervous just because I know you know when people come to my door, I'm not super thrilled about right, it, right? right? Um, but it it amazed me as we we're handing out these flyers, the number of people that were either, oh yeah, I know this event, yes, yes, I was waiting to see when this was going to happen again, or they read it and they said, you know, yep, I'll be there. There was a woman who, um, you know, said, you know, I don't have any kids but I'm going to take a picture of this flyer and I'm going to share it out to my whole Facebook. And I was like, well, just go to the bridge website and, you know, share it from there. Cause there's, you know, at least colored pictures yeah. and that one's exciting. Um, but people were, were really, really excited to see the flyers and to hear about it. And it really, um, it, it got me excited for the day of just yeah. how much this does mean to the community. Yeah. That's awesome. So now, I'm, I, I have this idea in my head. Do you ever watch that show Shark Tank? Yep. Okay, so I love that show. Mm-hmm. Um, and they always, somebody always comes out and everybody presents, most for the most part, like a really good idea. And then usually Mr. Wonderful says, that sounds like a great idea, but tell me about your sales. You know, like mm-hmm. tell me about the numbers. So I'm, I think we're not always going to know what we're saying yes to, like you didn't. But tell me about what practically speaking, was on the other side of your yes. Um, how many backpacks did we give away? How many hungry people were we able to serve um, at Pack the Back? What was the result of this event? Yeah. Well, I'm, I've got Waukesha numbers. Um, there was also, we did do it, I, th- I think, was it the first year for Ocon as well? It was well? our second year. Second Shout year? out, Ryan Dockstadter does what you do, but yep. at our Oconomowoc campus. Yep. So if you, had to, if you have just Waukesha numbers... I actually have both. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So that's that's great. Yep. Share what we did in Waukesha as a result of the event that you coordinated. Okay. So in Waukesha, we had 104 families that attended. Um, that equaled out to 201 backpacks and gift cards because yeah. this year we, we did, and last year as well, instead of filling it with actual school supplies, we've given out gift cards. So that gives them a little bit more freedom, maybe some clothes, maybe some, right. you know, for what they get to pick out, it yep. gives them that, that experience as well. Um, and we served 400 hot dogs. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, again, that's not even necessarily the focus of the story. I think, and, but I love that, mm-hmm. that God came through and he used your obedience to serve hundreds of people and over a hundred families and to feed his hungry children. It's a big deal. Uh, He really does use it. But at the end of the day, even if we didn't have those numbers to look to or to point to, God is just looking for our yes. And I like to think about it. Sometimes, if we just put it in faith terms, sometimes we have, uh, this is not a video, but like spread your arms out wide. We have so much faith to give or so much of our yes to give. And sometimes we just have a little bit in the palm of our hand and God is saying, hey, I know how I created you. So you're going to have your ups, you're going to have your downs, but every day I'm looking for you to take the faith that you have in your heart and just offer it up to me. And whether it's a little or it's a lot, he's going to use it. Mm -hmm. And there's power when we obey. So thank you so much for giving your yes, even when this time God said, I want you to give it to me blindly. Yes. It's powerful. Is there anything else that you'd share? Oh man, no, just, you know, pretty soon we'll be starting to look at the 2022 yeah. pack the back. I mean, it's, we're, it, I know in the past, you know, the people who have run it have, you know, it, it, it was second nature. Like Jean yeah. knows how to plan this and with her eyes closed. Um, I'm not there yet. Mm-hmm. So starting soon, um, and just really looking to expand, expand involvement and ideas. And, you know, it's especially coming out of, um, you know, all the, the turmoil we've had and, and, and weird world that we've been in for the last year and a half, um, you know, just bringing some new ideas and how do we reach people differently? You know, I'm, I'm all ears. This is, I think I, as a human, I lean into talking about leading things, but I'm really changing in my heart and my words. I'm coordinating this. This is, this is not me doing pack the back. This is, this is me being the conduit to, yeah. you know, bringing, bringing ideas in, bringing, making, you know, executing on it, getting it, bringing it to the world. Um, but I can't do it alone. <laughs> yeah. I love it. And, uh, and over the past, well, over the past 2000 years, we have shifted from one idea of how ministry gets done into this weird idea of like, there are pastors who do the work and everyone else kind of attends. 
and I love that we aren't really operating that way because you volunteer to do this, and that's how it should be. Is ministry does not belong in the hands of pastors or church staff members. It belongs in the hands of every person who has submitted their life to the Lordship of Jesus. Mm-hmm. We Then we are all shepherds. We all have some gift, like you're so administrative and you have a heart for people. Man, you're taking that and you're doing it. Um, and then, and I love what you, you take that even further and you say, and then I'm going to take this quote unquote power I have and I'm going to give it away to others because you're coordinating it. You're not the guy you or the girl. You are um, making other people the guy. You're making other people the girl. It's just, it's how it should be. That's yeah. Ephesians chapter two in action. So thank you so much for saying yes. And thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. Thank you.